Hey, I'm Brian. After years of building apps with Angular, I'm here to help you level up your skills and create incredible projects of your own. In this video, you'll learn everything you need to know about content projection in Angular. We'll cover how to use ng content for dynamic content, create multiple slots, use advanced features like ng project as, and even add fallback content. By the end, you'll be able to build flexible, reusable components with ease. Let's get started. The idea of content projection actually comes from web components. At its core, it's about creating holes in a component where you can insert unique content, whether that's plain HTML, custom markup, or even other components. These holes are called slots. Think of them as placeholders for content that comes from outside the component. This is super useful because it lets you inject custom content into specific regions of a component without mixing up the DOM trees. It keeps everything clean and organized. And the best part, Angular fully supports this. In web components, we use the slot element for content projection. But in Angular, we use a special element called ng content. Let's dive into an example to see how it works. All right. Let's imagine we've got a growing Angular application and we're starting to sprinkle a bunch of these message sections throughout the app. Now, since we're repeating the same markup with just different content each time, it makes sense to turn this into a presentational component. Great idea, right? So we've already started creating a message component to handle this. But here's the challenge. We're dealing with dynamic content. We can't rely on these regions just having simple strings of text. The content could be anything. Headings, paragraphs, lists, or even more complex markup. So how do we handle this? Well, we need to use content projection. We want to project any unknown content right into this article element. To do that, we just add an ng content tag inside the article. Now, when the component is rendered, any content we place between the opening and closing tags of this component will get injected right here inside the article. All right, let's switch over to the main app component where we actually want to use this. First things first, we'll need to import the message component. Once that's done, we can simply replace all of these divs with our new message component. Let's save and see how it looks. Okay, looks a little different now with the icons and whatnot, right? But this is awesome. We've just created a reusable message component that encapsulates all the markup and styling, and we can drop any content we need into it. Super clean, super flexible. Now, here's something important to keep in mind. The ng content element isn't a real DOM element. It's not an Angular component, and it's not a directive either. It's just a placeholder that Angular uses to inject content during rendering. So you might expect to see this ng content tag if we inspect the final output, right? Let's check. All right, here's our message component. We can see the SVG icon from the component template. And here's the article element. But notice, inside the article, there's no ng content tag. That's because Angular replaces it entirely with the projected content. And this is crucial to remember, because it means you can't add directives, apply styles, or bind properties directly to ng content. It's purely a placeholder at compile time. All right, so that's how we add a basic generic content slot. But what if we want more structure in our component? Let's say we want a specific title slot and a subtitle slot under the main title, since we plan to use those consistently every time we drop this component in. And on top of that, maybe we want a generic region below for any random content when we need it. Good news, we can set this up easily and I'll show you how. Let's start by adding a header element for our title. Next, we'll drop in another ng content element. Now, Here's something interesting. At this point, we have two generic content regions. But the way Angular processes this is that the last one wins. That means the first slot gets completely ignored during content projection. But don't worry, 
We can fix that by creating multiple name slots using a special attribute called select. The select attribute just takes a CSS selector to target specific content. In this case, let's use h3. Now, Angular will look for any h3 tags between our component's opening and closing tags and project them right into this header. And just to be clear, it doesn't have to be an element selector. You can use a class or even an attribute selector if you prefer. Super flexible. Next, let's add another select attribute on the original region, but this time targeting the p tag. All right, let's wrap all of this in a section. Then we'll add a div with a class of content. Inside this div, we'll place a generic ng content region. This will catch any content that isn't an h3 or p. So everything else will get projected here. Now, since we were already using h3 and p tags in our main component, we shouldn't need to change anything else. Let's save and see how it looks. Nice, check it out. We've got some additional borders separating each of these regions now. This is because we have some styles for these regions in our existing style sheet for this message component, and now that content is projected into them, these styles are applied correctly. And if we inspect the DOM, you'll see the H3 ends up inside the header, the P tag inside the article, and all the remaining content lands in the content div. By using multiple slots like this, we can create specialized regions with custom styling while keeping the component flexible and reusable. And the best part, we can still accept random content with the generic slot whenever we need it. Now, if all of this still doesn't give you enough flexibility, don't worry. Angular has another trick up its sleeve. It supports aliasing for projected content placeholders giving you even more control. Let me show you how that works. Let's say I want to move this h3 and p tag directly into the template. But here's the thing. It wouldn't make sense to select these regions using h3 and p tags because we'd end up with the same tags nested inside themselves. That'd get messy, right? So instead, I'm going to swap these out for custom element selectors. Now, if we had components or directives matching these custom elements, they'd get projected into the right spots. But wait, that means we'd have to actually create those components or directives or register them in our custom element schema. And that feels like overkill for this. Luckily, there's another way. We can switch these elements to something else entirely. I'm going to use an ng container because it doesn't add any extra markup to the DOM. Now here's the cool part. We can use a special attribute called ng project as. With this, we can tell Angular to treat these containers as if they were our custom selectors. So for the title, I'll add message title, and for the subtitle, message subtitle. And that's it. Let's save and check it out. Looks the same, right? That's how you know it's working. Now, I probably wouldn't do this exact setup in a real world project, but you might find this super handy in more complex scenarios where flexibility is key. All right, with everything we've covered so far, you might run into situations where you need to display some default content when nothing gets projected into a specific region. This is known as fallback content. Implementing fallback content is super simple. Just add the default content between your opening and closing ng content tags. That way, if no content is passed into these slots, the fallback text will automatically show up instead. Now, let's go ahead and add an empty message component here. Now, let's save and take a look at how it renders. And there we go. Our fallback content is showing up just like we wanted. Okay, I think that's probably everything you need to know about content projection in Angular.
Now you can build flexible, reusable components with dynamic content, multiple slots, and fallback options. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more Angular tips and tricks. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.